Hey, what's up? It's Chris Young. What do you say we take a few minutes to meet your brand new Forest River Salem? All right, let's talk about some of the features inside and outside of your brand new Forest River Salem. Congratulations on getting this awesome travel trailer. Now, we're gonna start right up here with the powered tongue jack, like you see right here. You'll notice three main parts of it. The manual override access here and the two rocker switches. These rocker switches not only help you raise the hitch, and lower the hitch, but you also have a little LED light switch right there, which kind of helps with additional safety and security when setting up. If you do need to manually override the power tongue jack, you just remove the rubber stopper here. This tool, which is located in the pass-through storage, goes in, you'll feel it catch, and then you can either turn up or down, just depending on which way you need to go. Right behind there, you'll have your LP tanks. Now, you're gonna have one of two types of regulator on your LP tanks. You're either gonna have one that has a readout and a switch, or you're gonna have this one here, which is just a plain old regulator with the unlock right here, so you can access and remove the pipe if you need it. But to just open up your LP tanks, just cut on whatever side you wanna use or cut on both. We always like to say, or I always like to say, do one at a time, there's really no need to get both going. but. There you go for that. If your regulator does have the kind with the switch, depending on which way you put the arrow, that's the tank you're gonna use. Push it to the left, using the left tank. Push it to the right, you're using the right tank. Now, your Forest River Salem is also gonna come with a battery disconnect located on the frame. You'll see right there, it is a switch which can be removed for safety, but you got on and you got off. And you do have a powder coated I-beam frame on this one. We're gonna come around to the campsite right here. Now, your pass-through storage doors in the front should be 30 by 20. They'll also have a dry erase surface on them, so if you wanna add notes or whatever, that's just a nice little feature. Your pass-through storage will be finished off, and you'll see you got some Velcro straps near the front cap. That's where some of your components are gonna be stored. For example, uh, your stabilizer jacks come with the strong arm attachment to it. This tool right here, is the strong arm adjusting tool. Right here is the manual override for your power tongue jack. And right here is the attachment for your drill for your stabilizer jacks. Just attach that on, run it up and down, get your RV stabilized. You will have to do the front and the rear, both the left and the right hand sides. You're gonna notice that your, mag uh, your doors are magnetic and they're anti-slam. You're also gonna have a heated and enclosed underbelly, which is the accessibility. You'll see that it's a paneled system, and to remove it, you can take out a panel at a time so that you don't have to take out the whole thing. Your awning is gonna be the Lippert Solera powered awning. It is a 12 volt, uh, and you'll notice it does have the adjustable pitch arms. You just pull them down to adjust the pitch. But when you get done, two things. Number one, if you are gonna adjust the pitch, make sure that you're standing under the awning and not on the outside, because when you do this, if there's water there, congratulations, you just got yourself a refreshing little bath. And number two, when you get done, push it back even, so that when you bring the awning in, it doesn't go back in cockeyed. And you'll notice on your awning, you also have a little rubber stopper over here on one of the sides. That's the manual override if you need to run your awning out in case you don't have power or if you lose power. It's a little 7 16th drive in there. Just put that in. You will have the step above solid steps on your Forest River Salem as well. So what you do to bring these out or to put them back in, make sure that the door is all the way open. Then all you gotta do is just raise it. You got a handle right here and a secure latch. There you go, now we're in. And then to pull them out, just pull the latch, grab the handle, and then just walk them down. To adjust the legs, you'll notice you have these little toggle switches right here. Push it in to release the leg, then you can then move it up and down. And when you're setting the legs, you wanna make sure that they are flush on the ground and that this bar up here, the, the plate, is also flush because if not, if it's raised up, you won't be able to shut the door. So there you go. You got cable connection and power connection. This will be a GFCI protected outlet right there. This is your fresh tank fill. So when you're ready to fill up the fresh tank, just put your garden hose in there. You'll notice you do have a little valve right there to try to help keep you from overflowing. 
Uh, you'll have nitro filled tires, Dexter Easy Lube axles. Always check with your professional uh, at Camping World and Gander about, you know, hey, when do I grease these Dexter Easy Lube axles? The, the, the rule of thumb is about every thousand miles, give it one or two pumps of grease. That's it. But always ask your technician, hey, what's right for me? Uh, <clears throat> If your Forest River Salem does come with an external kitchen, you should have the Suburban Griddle on here. And this actually just connects up. There's a little regulator on the back here that connects up to your LP Quick Connect, which is located underneath the coach right there. If yours does have the lever, the regulator on top, you'll notice you got open and close for your LP Quick Connects right there. Uh, if you don't have any propane, coming through there, check to make sure that your propane tanks are open, number one. Uh, if you just opened them, it does take time for the propane to make its way through the line, so just give it a little bit of time. You'll also have the Everchill external fridge. This is a great little fridge. There's your little uh, connector for your LP Quick Connect right here for your griddle. Uh, you do have a little uh, section here for freezing ice as well as a little mini ice tray. Just a great little external fridge. Good seals on all of your storage doors and your external kitchen doors. Uh, you do have a little sprayer port right there. So if you need like a little outside shower, you can't control the temperature or the pressure, but it's great for just washing off, you know, the chairs or, you know, washing off the pets. That does come in handy. Your Forest River Salem will, is also gonna come with a suburban uh, furnace on it. You'll notice that this is on the campsite and we are under the awning. So chances are people might wanna set the chairs outside. Just be careful if it is running the heat on the inside, this does kick out hot air. Hot air and fabric don't go well together. So just try not to block these. You'll also notice that right here, we have our hot water heater. Just gonna remove that real quick. A few things to note about your hot water heater. If you're gonna change the anode rod or you need to relieve the pressure, right here behind the latch is the pressure release valve. If you do need to reset this one, you got the double press button to reset right there. Right in here is your flame tube. Your igniter is back under here. A good rule of thumb, especially if you're bringing it out of storage, get some pipe cleaners and just clean this tube out because propane has a chemical in it known as mercaptan that is very attractive to uh, dirt daubers, bees, and spiders. And a nest in there could cause a flame up. It could also cause your hot water heater not to work. So just get a little rule of thumb to get that cleaned out. If you do need to change your anode rod, it's down here. You'll see the threading. Just take that out and replace it. Suro storage there, spare tire. You do have a backup camera on this one as well. So you see that mounted there. Your cable connection as well as satellite connection and cover right here. Plus you'll have your 30 amp plug right here. Uh, the one thing we always like to say about the, uh, the plugs, make sure when you turn it, you lock it. A lot of times, if you're lucky enough, your cord will also have a light to let you know that there is power on there, but screw it in. If you're, if you're locked in, you know you're locked in, you're screwed in, you're not getting power, check the breakers at the junction box where you plugged into the campsite just to make sure that you're getting power. Your Forest River Salem also has the Schwintec slide system. Uh, this is a, you'll see right here, it's a rack and pinion through frame slide system right there, sturdy. You also have triple uh, seals on this one too. Um, and you know, it's got, that, it's got that good ply system in here. So you got good insulation all the way around. But one of the things with your slide, you'll notice good contact points here to help keep the moisture out. About every six months, lubricate these touch points, lubricate these seals so that they don't dry rot and cause them to crack and then you end up getting some slide problems. Main terminations are located right there, indicated by the color of the handles, black for your black tank, gray for your gray tank. If you're hooked up at the campsite, you don't really need to keep them open all the time. As a matter of fact, I like to tell people, don't, don't keep your black tank open because what can happen is pyramiding can happen with that solid waste that gets inside the black tank. It makes it extremely difficult, not only to flush, but the water flow isn't consistent as well. And if you're gonna clean these out, dump the black tank first and then dump the gray tank. That way the water from those gray tanks can kind of clean everything out as it goes. You also will have your city water connection right here. 
and your black tank flush right here. You'll notice that the caps are two different styles. One is smooth and one is rough. That's just kind of help you indicate the differences between the two and use a water hose to this, not your potable drinking hose, <laughs> please. Use just a regular garden hose when you are ready to clean out your black tank. Hook it up there and make sure the black tank is open before you apply any pressure into that flush. If not, that's gonna be a bad day for everybody all the way around. Other side, you pass through storage once again with magnetic doors. And what do you say? Now that we've seen some of the features on the outside of your Forest River Salem, we take a little walk and check out what's going on on the inside. So here we are on the inside of your all new Forest River Salem travel trailer. Now, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to look for is your command panel. You'll see this one right here, the KIB command panel, positron panels, whatever it may be. Lots of information here, lots of options all in one small space. You do have a water pump on this unit, which if you're dry docking, that's the only time you really wanna use it. If you're hooked up to city water, you don't really need the pump. You do have a water heater on there. You'll notice that it's trying to light the water heater now, even though we don't have any propane. Uh, once it does light, that light will go off. You got your light controls to the right of those, and then your info commands right here for your battery to see how much power you have. Check out your fresh tanks, your black tanks, your gray tanks. Um, with these buttons right here, uh, if you're running on coach battery, if you notice your slide isn't going out and you check the battery, if you're below two thirds, that's because you don't have enough power on the battery to run the slides out. Um, you really need over 11 volts I even say 12, uh, to get the slides to go out properly. Same thing with your tanks. If you flush your tanks and you notice that your gray tank or your black tank is not showing empty, but you're pretty sure that you flushed them and nothing else is coming out of the terminations, wait for a couple of minutes because there are two sensors on your tanks. And sometimes the water dripping down the side of those tanks can cause a continuity stream in between the two sensors to make it read like there's still fluid in there, but there's not. Give it a minute for that to drip down, 15 minutes or so, go back and check it, then you should show empty. If not, bring your unit in and let our service folks take care of it for you. You got your rocker switches for your slides right here, in and out, both for the slide out. The one that's not labeled is usually your power awning. So if you, you know, push it and you hear something outside, that's your awning. Over to the side of your control panel will be a dimmer switch. Now these will be located either next to the control panel or sometimes in the slide. And what this is for, Bob, I'll show you. Go ahead and pan over to the main part of the coach here. The dimmer switch just allows you to cut off and on the main house lights. Just a nice little added feature. We do have the air Excel controls for our HVAC system right here that controls both our Suburban heater and our Coleman Mach uh, 13,500 BTU AC. Now, your option, they come with a 13.5 BTU AC, but you can option for a 15K, especially if your coach is uh, 50 amp service. So if you need that, just talk to your specialist, make sure they point you in the right direction of having the right one. In the main living area, you'll notice a few nice upgraded features and amenities like number one, the fireplace. This is an electric fireplace uh, with multiple flame settings, multiple light settings. Uh, it even has a timer. It's an electric blower, so you do have to be hooked up to uh, shore power to get it to work. Uh, if you do not feel any heat coming out, but you know you're plugged into power, you've checked the circuit breakers, you know, everything's okay, the post is okay, bring this in and let our folks at uh, Camping World take care of it for you. Right above that will be your Furion sound bar. Now you're either gonna have the Furion or the Boss system. Uh, so if you have the Furion sound bar, very easy to operate. There's your power button in the main controls. It does have an LED readout in the middle of the bar so you can see if you're going from radio, if you need to change the mode to Bluetooth, to uh, HDMI, as well as your dual zone controls for both internal and external sound. Over here in our Schwintech slide, uh, one of the things to point out first before we get into the Versa system is your pull down shades will also have a white back on it. That's gonna help with the heat because it's gonna reflect, whereas most, most of the shades have the black backer absorb the heat. Now, your Versa lounge is awesome because it's versatile. You notice it's light, it's plush, it's comfortable with many movable parts. 
You got the little jackknife sofa right here. Just always be careful, no matter what component that you're moving, try not to hurt yourself. If you're not comfortable, have somebody help you. But the jackknife sofa, easy, you lift up, you fold down. Now you got yourself a full-size bed. Lift it up again, grab the back, push it back in place. You're also gonna come with the stow and go storage compartment, which is a handled access point right here with your tubs that are stackable, heavy duty, keep things organized, love it. If you do have the sofa and the couch option or the sofa and the dinette option, you're gonna have what's known as the Versa Lounge. And you'll see right here, you can set it up as a dinette, you can set it up as a chaise or a full bed. And it's very easy to operate. It just takes a little bit of working to get it to work. And here's what I mean. I'm gonna remove this pad, which can be Velcroed into the wall. This component right here is the main component of changing your Versa lounger. So just be careful once again, lift the backer out. And as Bob will show you, you got two stoppers on the back and the two legs. Now the legs are half the width of the hole in the stoppers. That's to help you get everything organized a little bit easier. So if you wanna set it up as a chaise lounge, and Bob, you'll see we have the legs over here on this side. I'll let you get in there so you can see that before I put them in. And then all you do is you turn this around. Just once again, be very careful not to hurt yourself or your RV. Lift that up and slide them in place. The only thing is you gotta make sure that you don't put one leg in before you put the other one in because then you won't be able to get both of them in. So just try to keep it level, try to keep both legs going at the same time. It'll be a whole lot easier for you. But there's your chaise lounge, or when you kick out the jackknife sofa, look at how big of a bed you have now. So pretty nice. Your dinette still does reduce down into a bed so you can have two separate sleeping spaces right here with versatile options. Now, your Forest River Salem is also gonna come with an Everchill 12 volt fridge. Uh, this is a frost-free refrigerator. It does run off a 12 volt, which means it can run off the house batteries. But uh, since you are solar prepped on this one uh, with a 10 amp quick connect on the camp side, um, get to solar panels. They come in so handy, they'll trickle charge the battery because these 12 volt fridges will pull a lot of power off the 12 volt battery. They will cool things down a lot faster than those gas electric fridges because um, the gas electric fridge is really just meant to keep things cold, not make them cold. So this does work better. It's 10.7 cubic feet. You do have your freezer controls here for cold and colder. And down below are your controls to cut this off. You, you can you know just move this however you want it. But to, to cut it on and off, you just hold it for 10 seconds and that'll cut this unit off. And if you need to store it for while you're in transit, you'll notice the safety little latch right there. There you go. Your backsplash, which is a hex decorative backsplash, is cement backed. So that's a very nice feature to keep it extra sturdy and keep it in place. You're either going to have the Greystone or the Furion appliances inside your kitchen. And you can have the regular microwave or the 30 inch Greystone convection microwave as well. You'll have the hood right here with the fan, your light controls and your fan controls there. Your cooktop, whether it's Furion or Greystone, will work the same way. You'll have the glass cover for your grill style grates. Your front burner will be a high output burner. And if you have gas uh, in your LP tanks and you know it's there to work your oven and to work your cooktop, push this which for whichever burner you want, I'm gonna do the front one right here. And you just turn it, you notice you got low, you got high, and you should hear gas going, but this is your igniter right here. The, the great thing about these is they only turn one way and you really only want them to turn one way, but this will ignite this little switch right here. You should see some popping as I turn it. And that'll give you flame. If you uh, know that you have gas, and you're doing this and it's still not lighting, you can lift this top panel up. There's a little connector on either one of the sides uh, that if that comes disconnected, just connect it back. That's what causes the igniter to light. Um, if you say, hey, you know, we got gas, that's working. We're still not getting any fire. 
Uh, number one, make sure you actually have propane. If your propane tanks are full, that it's prop that it's come through the line. Uh, and if it's still not working, bring it in. Let our service folks take a look at it. For your oven, same thing, except for one little caveat. The oven actually has a flame symbol to know this is what you cut it on to light it. You push and turn till you get to the light, and then you just turn the igniter. And that is how you operate your Furion and Greystone cooktop and oven. Now you will have an undermounted sink with a drying rack. This is a great option for making sure you don't have wet dishes all over your countertop. You can roll it up and get it out of the way. Easy to clean, 50-50 with the high rise sprayer there. You'll notice you'll have the spray option as well as the stream option. And over here are your controls. Open, opens up the water flow and then forward is cold, back is hot. Uh, you know, just a nice little residential style faucet. If your Forest River Salem has the recliners, they're just recliners, sit in them and enjoy. <laughs> Walking into your bathroom, you are gonna have a high rise plastic Dometic foot flush toilet inside your Forest River Salem. And one little tip about these, uh, if you push the pedal down, but you notice that you know fluid is still uh, leaking through, you can actually take some Vaseline and a glove and get around the bottom of that rubber seal. That'll help keep the stopper in place for you. Your shower will be a single surround herringbone pattern with the angled style Aquaflex door like we have here. You got your shower controls, hot and cold, plus your open and close for your shower right there. Your vanity sink will have hot and cold options on it as well. With your medicine cabinet, let's see here, step in here, Bobby. With your medicine cabinet, there is one thing to note about your medicine cabinet. There is a suspension string on the side over here that latches to this little hook on your medicine cabinet. That's how you keep it secure while you're in transit. Um, and before we go into the master bedroom, let's find the breaker panel real quick. Fuse box, breaker panel, whatever you want to call it. This is an important part of your RV to note because all of these fuses right here will have a fault light. So if you, the AC is not running, you know you're hooked up to power, you look down there, oh, or microwave or fridge. If there's a red light in the middle of that fuse, that fuse is bad, you can replace it. Just a nice little indicator to let you know what's going on. And you'll notice that your fuse box also has a panel that you can see through, just in case you can tell right away that your line is there. You also have a uh, pre-wired for the King Wi-Fi extender and cell phone booster. Uh, that's just a dish that you can put on top to really boost your signals while you're out in transit. Your master is going to have storage that is strut supported, which is also accessible from the outside. This is a great feature so that you don't have to go outside to get bags or whatever you have put inside your storage. You're also gonna notice you have the dual USB charging ports on both sides of your bed, plus a 110 outlet inside on both sides. And then you have the roller shades for your windows and your TV backer. Check with your specialist about the weight and size for the TV backer for your bedroom, you know, if, if yours has it there. Most of the time, the rule of thumb is this TV backer will hold a 32 inch TV, but always check with your specialist to make sure that that's right. Cable connection and 110 right there. So that's it for some of the features that you're gonna find on your brand new Forest River Salem travel trailer. Hopefully this helped you. We'll make you have a better camping experience because at Camping World and Gander, that's what we want. We wanna make sure that you have the best camping experience possible with your brand new RV.